so you've got your tow bar on and then you get to the scary bit which is getting the electric sorted now a lot of people throw their hands up in horror at this but it actually if you are methodical isn't quite as difficult as you might think now in the old days you could wire straight into the vehicle wiring and that powered your uh, plug at the bottom whereas in more modern cars you can either buy vehicle specific wiring or you can get what they call a bypass relay now if you buy vehicle specific wiring you might not be out of the woods because frequently when you plug them in you will have to get something done with the uh, software on your car so that it recognizes it and works with it whereas if you use a bypass relay it will just definitely work and I'm going to explain how this works and how you can do it for yourself with your tow bar installation. When you get the kit, and this is a kit that I'll link to in the description, and it's a you know fairly universal, most of them will come just like this. You actually get the relay, some wires, and some scotch locks. And I know people are gonna throw their arms up in horror about the scotch locks, but they work. And you also get some instructions. And you look at it at first and you think, how the hell am I gonna do this? It'll really help if you've got a basic understanding of what this is doing. What it is, is a relay. What that means is it'll switch the power on and off to the different sockets on your seven pin trailer adapter. So brake lights, indicators and such like. So it's a relay that switches them off. So the wire that you've trailed through from your uh, tow bar installation, actually you split it out and you connect it according to their um, scheme there to this side of the relay. Now the power that's going to go through here actually comes in as 12 volts onto this. So the power for this is from your battery 12 volts fused through to your lights. What these wires do is they're actually the triggers that say which lights should it switch on and they find out which ones they should be by connecting them to the wiring that already goes to your lights now the hardest part of this is actually finding out which wires you need to connect these to everything else is just doing a tidy job and hiding it away you're obviously not having it trailing over the boot so let me give you a few more details about how I'm installing this. I'm fitting this in the V50 Volvo that I've recently put a tow bar on. But what I'm going to say will help you no matter which car you're putting it into. When I fitted this tow bar and fitted the socket, I had the wire and I had to find some way to get it near to the rear lights. In this particular car, it was very handy. There was a grommet that I could go through and position it near to the right hand rear cluster. Now, you just need to be way near one or the other, but you do need to be aware you will need to run a wire across to the other set of lights when you get on. Let's not worry about that for now. First things first, decide where you're going to position this in the car. I'm going to put it behind some of the trim here near the rear light cluster. I can then decide how long this wire is going to be, cut it, strip it back and connect these to this one. Absolutely ready so it's completely ready to go. I've got to put a 12 volt feed from the battery via the fuse to this box but I don't connect it to the relay straight away I just get the wire in place ready to go on a Volvo V50 I'm quite lucky there is actually a 12 volt feed to a cigarette lighter that's right near to where I'm going to position this so I'm going to take my 12 volt feed from there but be aware you really should be running it straight from the battery so we know what we're doing with this and we know what we're doing with a power supply to it what I'll tell you about now is what most people feel is the hardest part, which is where do I connect these wires to to get the trigger for my car? Well, I'm going to give you three options for that. All have got benefits and all have got downsides, but a mixture of all three will really help. First one, 
is if you can get a wiring diagram for your car showing the rear lights you can pick up the colours for the wires that you've got to connect these to very simply. Secondly you could look on forums for your car somebody else who's done this job and frequently they will put what the colours of wires were that they had to connect their bypass relay to. But thirdly the belt and braces one which is always a good idea to do even if you've got that other information is we'll disconnect the panels at the back we'll pull out the wiring or the lights clusters and we'll have a look and you can work out which light comes on and which wire goes to it to check what color it is that's what i'm going to do in this car to see the lights wiring on the back of this volvo i could take out a number of panels now you might have to take out more on your vehicle but on this one I can see I've got lighting wiring here I've got wiring here and I can actually see the sockets for the bulbs if I pull out this panel as well so I can see my bulbs and I can see my wires for this car so to help you do this it can pay to take the cluster out and if you're changing a bulb you'd work the same thing by turning different lights on and off and obviously that's an indicator you can work out which bulb is which and therefore you can work out which wire comes through and powers which one so even if you haven't got a wiring diagram you can work it out from here in this case I happen to know that these orange ones are the indicators so having looked at the wiring in my Volvo V50 I now know which color wires are indicators reversing fog brake tail on the left and on the right so I can match these up with what's required to connect these two so I'm now in a position to start stripping wires and putting it all together. You'll notice there actually isn't a number three. It goes one, two, four, five, six. Don't let that throw you. So once you've put all the wires in, you'll notice that there's a white one that's left spare. Now that's actually the earth, and that'll be uh, joined with the white one from the other side of this and go to an earth somewhere on the chassis. You'll just need to decide on that later. Ignore the reversing one, because uh, that would be one that was only on a 13 pin socket and this is a seven pin socket installation. So now we've got these in place, what I eventually intend to do is coil this together and put some cable ties on it and put it down there and cable tie this to this uh, tray here. So the next thing for me to do is to get these wires out and start to connect these into the vehicle wiring at the appropriate places. The easiest way to use the Scotch locks is Find the wire you're going to connect to, first of all, and put that into the scotch lock. You might have to flex it open so that it'll go in. Once you've got that in, what you can do is the wire from the relay pushes in and it should only go part way. There is like a stop you might be able to see. So you've got these two lined up, the relay ones on the inside, the wire you're connecting to is on the outside then you crush that down with pliers so that it cuts into the insulation and joins the power the, the circuit together occasionally it'll miss and you might have to take it apart and occasionally you might actually snap one of the wires and have to solder it and do it somewhere else but in general they work quite efficiently and i've used scotch locks a lot people throw their hands up in horror but they do work the first thing that I'm going to do now is all the ones that I can do on the right here I'm going to scotch lock in so as the number one yellow is the left indicator I'm going to leave that for now I'm going to do the fog light which is this blue wire and it's going to connect to green and yellow and I'll find the green and yellow here and I'm going to scotch lock this to that one 
So I've got the green and yellow. So I'll put that in. And this needs to connect to the blue. So I'll put that in. Make sure it's all the way up to the end. And it is. And then, once I've got them in place, get a pair of pliers. Do that. So the blue's in, the green's in, and that's just a cover. So I've got the clip on. That seems nice and uh, tight now. So I'll need to do all the ones on this side, then I'll sort out wires across to the other cluster. Now, the reason I'm leaving so much wiring at the moment is that if I want to fiddle about with it, I've got a lot more flexibility. In the end, I can just coil all this up and put tape around it. It'd be really nice to cut everything to just exactly the right size. However, bitter experience tells me when you do that and you're fiddling around because you need to change something inside the trim, it really can get painful. That's all of the right hand cluster ones connected in. I've got two that need to connect into the left hand cluster for the indicator and for the tail light on that side. So what I'm going to have to do is run a wire up here over the top coming out on the other side. So let's have a look at doing that. To extend the wires we use the solder sleeves which are really useful. I'll put a link to them as well. Having extended the wires then I'm going to feed it in over the trim and behind the seal going around the hatch. So that it appears behind the cluster on the left hand side. And that's the two wires to the left hand cluster now connected in. So now I've connected all of the wires from the relay to the wires that control the lights. So I've got them all correct. I've also taken the power connector from this 12 volt socket at the back so that I've used the power from this through a fuse into the relay. I've also joined the two white wires which are earths and connected them onto a wire that's then taken the earth from this socket as well. You'd have to put a power line all the way through to the battery if you haven't got this and put an earth to a connector on the body. Now this looks very messy and what I will do is I'll actually cover it with loom tape eventually. That does two things. One, it makes it look a lot nicer for anyone looking at it, but secondly, it also supports these wires into the scotch locks. But before I do that, what I need to do is check that this relay is picking up the signal from here. And the way that I'm going to do that is with a simple test light and check each connector where it comes out of the relay to make sure the right lights or the right connection is being made when the right light is on. The numbers on the relay and the colours correspond with the table that came with the instructions. So the first thing I want to do is check that both the right tail light and left tail light are working. So first things first, put lights on. So I'm looking for the black one, number seven. That lights up okay. And I'm looking for number five, which is the brown one. That lights up okay. And just to be sure, I'll check the others to make sure they aren't lighting up so there's no cross wire going or something that's gone wrong. Next thing, I'll check the uh, left hand indicator, which is the yellow, number one. So indicate left, turn it off again. I could hear the relay ticking. It's off, indicate left. Now that little chirrup at the start is when you've actually got a socket on, it will beep and make a loud noise. It's a safety feature. Indicator off. Right, so that's the left indicator. The right indicator is the green one. So connect it to that one, number four. So indicate right. Indicator off. So that one's working fine. 
And the next one that I'm interested in is the red one, which is the break, and that's number six. So I've got number six, so nothing. Press the brakes. Off, on, off, on. So I'm confident that these wires are all working. So the next thing to do would be to actually plug a light board or a trailer in to check that the power is not just getting to here, but it's actually getting to the socket as well. Well, I haven't got a trailer here to actually test it with, but what I will show you is using the same test light, we'll now check the socket out. So first of all, I'll just check. There's nothing coming to these initially which there shouldn't be. So first things first, can you put lights on please? The middle one is the left hand tail light and the one towards the bottom on the left hand side is the right hand tail light. I'll just check the others to make sure I'm not getting anything on them. Okay, indicate left and that one is the top one. Working fine, turn it off. Now indicate right, and that's the bottom one. So that's working fine as well. And turn it off. And the final one is the brake light. So let me just test that first. So nothing, press the brakes hard. Brakes on, brakes off, brakes on brakes off. So all the sockets that I'm going to be using on here are getting the right signals. And the final check that I'll do is this one is the earth here. Now what we also want to know is that the earth's working but to check that what I'll do is take the ignition key out and put the four-way flashes on please. Warning lights. So not only do I know the warning lights are working, I know that they're working through the earth. So all the wiring that I'm using is absolutely spot on. That's the bypass filter fitted, tested and ready to go. Now that'll work for virtually any vehicle, even if it hasn't got the requirement for a bypass filter, the filter will still work if you connect it to the right wires. The issues you might find Number one, you might struggle finding the right wires to connect to and connecting them. Never failed to do that yet, but it can happen where it can be a struggle in a car. So you need to check that out right at the beginning. Second problem might be the Scotch locks, they live up to their reputation. Occasionally they won't have broken the insulation. So the first thing to check if it's a link's not working is is the Scotch lock actually connecting properly. So you sometimes have to redo them. I had to redo two here as it happens. Another issue might be when you come to plug a trailer in and you find lights aren't working on that. First thing you'll do is blame the job you've just done make sure the trailer lights are actually working because usually they've been sat there for six months in the rain with someone standing all over them and i've had it before where you plug something in and they don't all work first of all and it's not the car the relay that i've just used i will link in the description and some of the other tools if you like this why not give us a thumbs up it is very encouraging when we get that and if you're interested in this kind of thing and perhaps have a look at some of our other projects why not subscribe but thank you very much for watching